Okay, welcome back to my let's play of Tainted Grail, the fall of Avalon on Tabletop Simulator. We're playing as Bayor, who was uh, left behind for the epic journey because uh, he's apparently a weak piece of shit, even though, I don't know, he doesn't really look it. I guess it's because he's inexperienced, which is, uh, you know, it's always a concern. It's always a concern. Um, yeah. So I'm trying to remember exactly where we left off. Maybe I should... Uh... <laughs> I'm trying to remember what phase we left off because I'm sitting here with two energy. Let me just bring up this video. We did the battle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did the battle. I... Okay. We flipped over an event. We started the new day. We did, we, yeah, we're on the, okay. How do I only have two energy, though, is my question. Because we did the battle, that drained us down to zero. Right. Drained us down to zero. Oh, did I have a dream that fucked me up? Yep, I had a dream that fucked me up. Yeah, okay. So, that means that we're on, uh... Phase two during the day and I have two energy so moving costs zero but I really wanted to get back into the woods to fuck shit up so let's consume our wayfarer leaves this fully restores our energy we take a damage and then this gets discarded um I don't know what discarding means here we go when you're asked to discard a location, random event, encounter, secret item, I'm going to put this card back at the bottom of its deck. Okay, there you have it. The event deck does have its own discard pile. Helps you track time, ensures a proper use of the deck. Okay, and what is the... The event discard pile is what, the current event? Whatever's face up is. So, should it really be like that? Because we've had. See, again, with the. I'm telling you, that doesn't work anymore. But first, we had this. Then it says, then discard this card. So, that implies that there is a dedicated discard pile that isn't the current event. But I don't know. I mean, it doesn't seem to make much of a difference. Okay, so we did that. Then we had uh, Beast on the Prowl. Then we had Wandering Beast. Then Heavy Rainfall. And now we're on this, I guess. I don't know. Uh, okay. Right. Right. So what am I doing? Oh, I was discarding this. So then this goes on the bottom of the item deck. There you go. Okay, so that's all good and done. So now we're going to explore the Grubwood again. We have to spend an energy to explore. And then we have to spend another energy to add three to our roll, which I'm pretty sure I want to do. So we're just hoping for the best here. Come on. Give me that six. Alright, we got a total of six. Which is good. Actually, it's not that good. It's not that good at all. We need an eight, which pretty much means I need to roll a five or a six on that die. That's a 33% chance per two energy. And if I fail, I get into a combat, which likely will drain my energy even more. Here, we're drawing two purple encounters and resolving the one with the higher value. Okay. <clears throat> 
So we've got the Apparition or the Whispering Wisp. Um, Both are at six, so I get to pick here. Apparition. If you have any terror, you receive an, a damage for every attack. So that means... When it attacks you, right? I think. Well, they should have a... Don't they have like a list of... If a player... No. Enemy traits opportunist. That's not what it says at all. So does that mean it has opportunist plus this other receive an unavoidable thing? So I have to play at least two combat cards per turn or I get the opportunity and then... Hmm. These are questions, man. These are questions. Uh, not really clear. It does sound like the opportunist is its own thing. And then this apparition is its other thing. Uh... I guess, uh... I don't know, I'm getting... All right, never mind. Okay, let's just interpret it that way. So you have to play two cards each turn, otherwise I'll gain a terror. And then I receive an unavoidable damage with each of his attacks, if I have any terror. Because his normal shit is just to make me lose cubes. Otherwise, there's a Whispering Wisp. If you reach maximum terror, you can he escapes from combat. Um... All of his shit is just gaining or applying terror. Uh, neither one is ideal. Because if my terror gets too high, we're starting to have nightmares. Let's go for the apparition, I guess. So we start with one cube. Thanks to the battle horn. Very nice. Got three cards here. Powerful blow right out the gate. Powerful blow right out the gate. Problem is, none of these let me gain another card. <laughs> and none of them have the uh, extra symbols, so I can't actually play two cards. Okay, so then I guess let's just play the powerful blow. That'll be a total of three more red cubes. Uh, I lose an energy for playing powerful blow. I don't play a second card, so his opportunity kicks in where I gain a terror. Uh, gain a terror, right? And then because I've gained a terror, I'm going to receive an unavoidable damage, and he loses two cubes. Putting us back at two. Uh, so I take a damage. Uh, but I do get a card. Okay, that still leaves us with no way... Oh, but this... I forgot to put the timer there, but that ticks over. Gaining another two cubes. So then all I need to do now is get two cubes on the board. And I win. Done.
And so this is what people were discussing with Opportunist is... If you kill him without playing the second card... Okay, so, yes, the definitive, so he does do his opportunity thing before dying. Which is lame, but that's another terror. Okay, but then he does die. Means that I gain a magic. Now, we didn't learn about magic yet. So... Supernatural power that might help you during encounters is often required to enable men here. Okay, so I, I don't think I'm like prevented from obtaining magic, so that's good. Um, Magic key. So you can activate the mad, the blue thing on cards if you spend a point of magic. Otherwise, you know, magic has other potential uses. But either way, I get a magic. There's nothing that says Bayor can't have magic. As far as I'm interpreting rules. So that's it. And uh, we won. That's all we gave. We got one magic for killing it. So this gets sent back to the deck. This gets sent to the bottom of the deck and the exploration's over. I don't think it's worth it to stick around here. So let's do our free travel up to the warrior fair. And let's spend an energy here to, uh, to explore. The Sea of Tents bustles with the sounds of combat and haggling, though you can't help but notice that even this festival has grown smaller since last year. It is a strange place. On one side, lords and rich merchants from all over the island. On the other, young men trying to prove themselves in combat and earn a contract, or a rare lone warrior looking for a new master. Alright, and we're going uh, to the book. Alright. So we can learn about Canucks champions and their expedition. We can take part in the grand tournament. We can explore the city of tents. Uh, only if you don't have part one of the helping hand status. Which I do. Don't. No, I don't. Didn't. Didn't I volunteer at the fucking asylum or whatever? Oh, no, I didn't. Okay. No, I didn't actually get it for that. All right. Uh, okay, so we could do that. We could buy a contract and try and sell it for a profit. Oh, okay, we could flip a contract, I guess, if I have a wealth. Uh, I have a couple wealth. But that would just possibly get me more wealth. I don't think that's really what we're looking for right now. Uh, let's learn about Canucks champions and their expedition. It doesn't take long before you meet some inland merchants who saw a party like the one you're looking for on the road to Timberwall Hold three weeks ago. It appears the heroes of Connacht journeyed to find the entry to the cursed ruins of the four-dweller capital, Tuathon, with plans to retrieve something of great value. Weird and troubling news. Maybe there's something else to learn. We can search for more witnesses. Obtain one energy per party member. But if I do that, I'll be exhausted, so let's hold off on that. So we go back to the starter location and make another choice. Uh, let's explore the city of tents. I would do the grand tournament, but I, I want more energy before I would do that. So let's go to verse four. A long haired shield bearer stops you as you pass one of the tents. Are you looking for a contract? Please buy off mine. My wife is sick. They say it's the red death. 
I need to get to her before she passes. My lord won't grant me leave. He wants to send me up north to fight his pitiful border war. I cannot do that now. Please, can you buy off my contract and let me go? I'll pay you back, I promise. Buying a contract of someone who you're not likely to see again is probably not the best idea. Still, there's something earnest in the soldier's eyes. Uh, uh alright, so basically we're trading a wealth for an XP. Uh, and we get helping hand. So let's do it. We'll just move wealth to XP. We get helping hand. And exploration ends. Uh, alright. That'll be the day, I guess. So let's uh, spend the food. Health goes up by one. Terror goes down by one. Uh, yep. Okay. I can't advance by spending XP. I think there's no dreams at the Warrior Fair, so we're good with that. Uh, then the next day, this ticks down to two, which has me a little shook. This. Oh, this actually, the Warrior Fair does not connect to 106. That's probably where we want to go, though. All right. Uh, reveal the next event. You recognize many constellations in the night sky. The Twin Warriors, the Seal and her Cub, the Wench, and also the Cup, which is said to have appeared in the heavens when Arthur claimed the Grail. Now it seems that one of the stars on its edge has turned red, as if the Cup was leaking blood. What foul omen is this? Your time is running out. Next travel of every character costs one energy less. Place one additional random event on top of the event deck. Then discard this card. Okay, again, I'm not real clear on that, but sure. All right, so this turn... Well, actually, it doesn't say this turn. It's just whenever we travel next, it costs one energy less. Um... All right, let's uh, do the exploration to try and fight in the grand tournament. Uh, verse two, you step into a sand covered ring surrounded by a wooden fence, avid gamblers and prospective contract buyers. You nod to your enemy. The rules are simple. You strike until your opponent yields or is unable to do even that. The blades are blunt, but each contestant knows a simple truth. The more enemies left maim, the less competition for high paying contracts. Revolve the, resolve the Lone Squire Gray Encounter, difficulty 2. If at any point you have two or fewer health left, the fight is interrupted and you lose. Okay, you don't get any loot for winning the encounter. Difficulty 2, I assume, means this. Uh, Lone Squire, there he is. Alright, he's got 7. Uh, um, we don't have to kill him. We can also get the run away, so that's good. But he is going to be doing some fucking damage to us. And if we ever don't play a card, we lose the latest card in our uh, in our queue. All right, I think we can handle this though. We're starting with one cube on the board. Here we go. All righty. Uh oh, all righty. So final blow, you'll see, doesn't have any connecting symbols here, which would be pretty shit. It's a good final blow, obviously, but it's not what we want to open with. Um, yeah, we're probably going to open with grapple. Okay, so that gets a cube, and we get to draw a card. Cards are good. Then we can do throw or brutal attack. Throw would add, holy shit. One, two, three more cubes. Yeah, throw would add three more cubes. Brutal attack. Oh no, we can't play brutal attack because we don't have that. So we have to either play 
Throw or final blow. Oh no, we can't play final blow either. So it's got to be throw if we want to play an extra card. The only reason we wouldn't play the extra card is that... Oh no, but... Yeah, no matter what, he's going to do a damage to us. And then we'd lose grapple. And you don't want to lose grapple because it's got this two times on it, which is really good. Problem with playing throw, though, is that he's going to do three damage to us. But you know we're not getting through this battle unscathed, so it just is what it is. So because we have um, practicality, we get that red cube. This, we have two aggression, so we can play this to actually play the card. And then we have uh, a double red cube, so a total of three more. That puts him at five. So he's at five. He does three damage to us, which is painful. That brings us down to five. Uh, I get to draw another card. Okay. Now our options are actually really limited. I have to play... I have to play Final Blow and spend my magic. It's literally the only option here that works, because throw is pretty shit, actually. It's terrible. I don't know if you have to connect anything on the... Uh... Yeah, it doesn't say... In the very first combat card. Okay, yeah. That's the first one. When playing the very first combat card during your activation, you don't need to fill any... Sp okay, so I think you can play just shit. You can play some, a card where nothing connects. Um, if I'm understanding that correctly, it, it was... It says, when playing the very first combat card during your activation... It just needs to line properly with the previous card in the sequence. See combat sequence example. What does that mean, line properly? What does that mean? I gotta like Google this. Uh Every activation, you can always play any one card. The effect of that card may depend on whether keys were connected. Okay. So, yes. Which seems like, then, you should be able to avoid the opportunity thing a lot of the time. 
So I could play nonsense. I could play brutal attack for my first card, even though it just doesn't make any connection. And then for my second card, as long as I have the lightning bolt symbol to make it work, I can play the second card to connect to that one. Meaning that this would then add three more cubes and he'd be obliterated. I mean, everything that I have read now seems to indicate that's how it works. So that's how we're interpreting it. You know, if anyone watching down the line knows uh, the game, you can correct me, but that's how we're interpreting it. Okay, that was not too shabby then. We only took three damage. Go to verse three. A grim physician examines your wounds and bruises, applying pungent ointments. In the meantime, you notice a commotion among the gamblers and bookmakers. It would seem your next contender retreated from the tournament. For better or worse, you advance straight to the final round of combat. The next contestant is a seasoned veteran of the fair, with many contracts under their belt. Gain two health, resolve the seasoned warrior gray encounter. Great. Well, we gained two health at least. Seasoned Warrior. Look at this bad boy. Nine. Nine health. Beware of old men in professions where most men die young. <laughs> okay. So again, he has the potential to just do plenty of damage. Okay. Yeah, that mid-range there. Three to five. Three damage. That's iffy. Alright. We can handle it. We can handle it. Bayor can handle it! He's gonna prove himself! Okay. Probably open with risky attack. Yeah, I like opening with Risky Attack. Because, uh, yeah, no matter what, I can cover it up. So if I get the Skull Effect, we can cover it up. If I get the Grail Effect, that's just permanent either way. Or not permanent, but it's good. So let's take a, a Grail Coin. And we're really gonna chuck this motherfucker. We got the Grail. Beautiful! So, we get one cube for this, and then we get two more cubes for the Grail effect. And then... We can play Reposition. Which really sets us up nicely for the, uh, the next turn. Okay, so then we draw a card. All right, he's got four cubes on him, so we're going to be taking three damage, and there's not a damn thing I can do about it. So I think my max energy goes down. Four. Or my energy goes down. Okay, so it's a little dicey now, a little dicey. Um, yeah, we're just going to do the attack. That adds another two. And then we're going to do ignore pain. Which lets us draw a card. Okay, and then I could do battle cry as well. Although, if I leave this up, I gain a cube for every point of damage received. He would do two, so I'd be up to seven after losing the one. Uh, but this lets me prevent a damage. I think that's probably more valuable. 
Uh, oh, but wait, I don't have two courage. Nope. All right. I, so I can actually play that. All right. Then it is what it is. I get to draw another card. Okay. Um, then I am... I might lose, actually. Because I'm taking two damage. Is it ever less than... Fewer than two health. Okay. There's still a chance here. So he's going to hit me for two. And I lose a cube. But then thanks to ignore pain, I would gain two. So he's at seven. I'm down to two health. Yikes. This is... This is rough. Uh, okay. Then, uh... If I play Powerful Blow... I would lose an energy, so I'd become exhausted, so I'd take a damage, and I would lose the battle. So let's start with Battle Cry. That gets me a card. I can spend the magic to add a cube. Let me just see what card I got here. Oh, boy. So let me choose the attack. So I could just choose the one where I lose two cubes. No, no, I can't. I can't play this. Actually, this is my first card, right? Why would I have played? Oh, yeah, because I was hoping to draw into. Hoping to draw into something useful, but I can't actually play this because there's no magic connector. Can't play this because there's no extra card. Um, I'll prevent a damage, but, um, uh, I'm still going to take one damage, so I lose. No matter what, I lose. No matter what, even if I had played Powerful Blow, instead of Battle Cry, I mean, it would have been like a tie, but... This is, the rules are pretty clear here. If at any point you have fewer than two health, the fight is interrupted and you lose. So, that's just a loss. Uh, so it doesn't really matter. I'd rather lose for, uh, for damage. Than getting exhausted. So... Yeah, we'll play Hold Guard. Uh, I can choose the enemy attack. So we'll just pick the one damage. Oh, but that would make me... No matter what, I'm fucked. I'm dead. Right? Unless I can choose to escape. Hold on, let's look at those rules. Uh, running... running away... Escaping. Lose an energy, trigger the opportunity attack. And that, okay. The opportunity attack is fine, but the energy loss... Okay, I guess that's my best bet, because then I'd lose this. This would go down here. Or becoming exhausted, because I'm Bayor. But then the fight would end, and I would at least survive. Jesus. I was not prepared. Not prepared for that shit. Okay, and exploration ends, and uh, my turn ends. And uh, we're, looks like we're not doing too well. So, I eat up food. I gain a health back. My energy goes up by four. 
two, three, four. Jesus. Okay, um, so that's that. So this goes down to one. Uh, we reveal the next event card. So this is still in effect. My next move still will cost one less. Dense miss. Each exploration locations without a settlement costs one additional energy. Great. Great. All right, so we're going to do our free move over to Connacht. I don't think... I don't think it's fair to, like, make me spend an energy just to, like, try and remember what options were here. Okay, I can rest for the day in my own home. That's probably worth the energy. Although that ends the day, I assume. And then we'd basically lose the game. So that's not a good idea. Let's, uh... Let's head up to Hunter's Grove by spending an energy. That reveals this. Either go to Whitening or go there. We're trying to find our goal if your quest is to earn a Menhir Rights secret card. I think I'm more likely to find that in the Four Dweller Mounds. So let's spend another energy to get there. And then I have to spend one additional energy to explore here. Two energy. Which reduces my health. Which means that now in combat... Oh no, I didn't reduce terror for eating. Right, that should be there. Okay. Otherwise we'd panic in combat. Okay, Beor is basically on death's door and he's exploring uh, some four dweller mounds. Okay, the mist covered mounds resonate with the sound of spades and pickaxes. Once only insane treasure hunters worked here, but as more and more gold emerged from under the earth, these burial grounds turned into a regular mine. Or at least almost regular. People still disappear or go mad here on occasion. Okay, we can't activate the men here because we don't have the men here right secret card. But we can look at the book for 106. You can wander deep into the mounds, chat with the miners, or leave. Wandering deep into the mounds is going to be shit. But I feel like it's the only chance I have of finding whatever it is. No one was ever able to count the mounds, and the most experienced miners claim... Most experienced miners claim new ones keep arriving, though no one can explain how. How far do you dare to wander? Okay. It doesn't sound like there's a big difference in paying the extra energy. I would get to add one point to it. So, let's just roll the d6. Two. Great. Miners scramble in panic as a weird beast jumps out of the mist. Each party member with zero aggression loses one health. Exploration ends. Okay. Damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. I'm out of fucking energy. I'm out of fucking time. This was a disaster. Um, yeah, not a whole lot else I can do. Eat some food. Uh, this goes back to five. Then... Uh, this goes down to zero. But we don't... It doesn't get removed yet. Uh, 
Men here in weirdness. All characters present on any removed location immediately lose two health, gain two terror, and are moved to the nearest remaining location cards. Okay, we can't reactivate the men here because we don't have the men here rights. The last men here on the map goes out. Do not remove the last remaining location cards. Um, continue to play, but you lose two health and gain two terror at the start of each day. Shit. Alright, so basically we have one last day here to make it count. Uh, we get another event card. Check the men here. If there's an active men here in Connacht, put this card back on top of the deck. Uh, I mean, there technically isn't, right? The weirdness is coming. From now on, in accordance with the menu, okay, you lose two health and two gain two terror at the start of each day, including now. But it wouldn't be now, right? Because that, yeah, I thought the timing was specifically important. Because step one is to remove any expired ones. And then you remove any locations out of the active ones. Then you tick down. See, the men here itself won't disappear nor become inactive until the next start of day. Right. So, technically, there isn't in there is an active men here in Connacht, so this card just goes back on top for now and basically it's going to continue uh to go back on top again and again until we die or we solve the quest all right great let's spend an energy to explore let's try chatting with the miners first verse two you stop and listen to a miner's tale. They say a young foreman's apprentice once met a pale, sad girl between the mounds, and she ran from him without a single word. Over the following weeks, he kept slipping away from his work to wander between the mounds, looking for her. He saw her two more times, but never managed to catch on. Finally, one day, he noticed the girl running into an open four-dweller mound. He followed her. The place was dark and teeming with strange powers. The apprentice kept pushing onwards, even as voices taunted him and laughed. Finally, after hours of fruitless search, he emerged from the exit, only to discover his body and posture had changed. He, he was now a young, pale girl. Before she was able to overcome the shock of this discovery, a gruff foreman's apprentice spotted her. Shocked and ashamed, she ran away and wandered the mounds for days until she found an open tomb again. This time, there was an empty coffin inside. The girl was so tired she lay in it and fell asleep. She woke up in a comfortable bed, as a six-year-old boy who still shuddered from the intensity of his dream. This dream never left his mind, and finally pushed him to leave his village at the age of, age of 15 and sign up as a foreman's apprentice in the mounds. The man who tells you this story has sunken sad eyes, full of fear and yearning. You thank him for his time and discreetly move away. Damn, man, this place is crazy. If you don't have part two of the mystery, burning mystery status, each party member gains one XP, then gain part two of the burning mystery status. Okay, I skipped part one, apparently. Uh, and we gain an XP, so that's nice, even though we're about to die. Uh, all right, I guess we can continue to explore. There's something in these mounds and we gotta find it. So I'll spend another energy to go in. Uh, I guess let's spend the energy to add one point. Oh, does this actually mean my energy couldn't have gone above two ever? I think that's exactly what it means. I think I was done a while ago. <laughs>
can never have more energy than health. Yep. All right. Well, then we were done a while ago. This was a failed campaign. Huh. All right. Well, that's that. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. It's a cool game. I definitely want to try again. Again, my concern, though, is like... Now that I know that there's nothing at the Warrior Fair, there's nothing in the Grubwood, there's nothing at the Forlorn Swords that can help me solve this quest. I mean, you sort of eliminate options. And once I find out exactly where the Men Here Rights is, at the start of every time I play this campaign, it's just like, oh yeah, I know where to go. I know what to do, and this is bup, bup, bup. It's easy. I mean... Maybe it's, uh... Maybe it gets a little trickier. I didn't do the dream at this location, did I? There are no dreams in this place. Okay. Um, yeah, what I should have done probably is spent the night at Connacht like it recommends if this is your first game, because that gives you a big hint, I assume. Um, yeah. I want to I want to try again, but I don't know if I should bother making it a video. I already have a lot of videos. Yeah, we'll probably just leave it off here. It's good, though. I mean, I, like I said, I really like the theme. I do like the combat system. I, I like the mechanics here. I don't know... Seventh Continent, I would definitely love to play with, like, one other person. This one, I'm not so sure. Just because I feel like the combat is so... sort of isolated and, like, just time-consuming of, like, solving a puzzle by yourself. And it's like, oh, well, I've got this, and if I do this... And, and while this is going on, people that aren't involved in the combat are just like... Yeah... Tell me when you're done. I'm going to go over here and play something else. You know, it's one of those. Um, whereas Seventh Continent combat is literally just like, well, I have this card and this card. I'll just draw these and that's it. You know, it's not it's not nearly as involved. So as a solo game, this is pretty cool. And I think there's isn't there like a game on Steam or something? Isn't there a version of this? Tainted Grail Conquest. Yeah, this exists. Is this... Oh, this is not just the... Okay, this is not the uh, just a video game version of the board game. Here's the first review. Tainted Bra Grail board game is one of the most immersive, engaging, and fun deck-building roguelike adventure games I've ever played. It's a triumph and a work of art. This is not that. It's, this isn't even close. Okay. I guess because they made it, they made it into like this shitty looking 3D game instead of just, you know, basically making, taking the 2D cards and things like that and just putting it into a digital space. <sighs> um... Hmm. Apparently they changed rules. Okay, they changed the whole combat system. Huh. All right, then. Yeah, never mind. I thought I thought it would just be like a digital version of this, but no, it's its own thing, really. Oh, yeah, it looks quite different. 
Weird. Okay. Odd. Oh, but then there... But then what is this? <laughs> what the hell is this? Okay, so there's Tainted Grail Conquest, which is what I was just talking about, that people are shitting on. And then there's this other thing that isn't out yet called Tainted Grail The Fall of Avalon. Um, which also looks to be a different thing entirely. This looks like... <laughs> what the hell is this? This isn't even... Health, Sanity, Resolve? I mean, Resolve's not in the board game. And then there's like percentage chances of things, and you're fighting like four things at once, and... This looks like a completely different game as well. I don't know what's going on with this company. Uh, anyways, I will stick stick to Tabletop Simulator, I guess. Yeah, like, buy the physical game, and then, you know, if you just want to play uh, easily on digital, you can just play Tabletop Simulator. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I just don't know if I would play this with anyone else. I'd rather play it myself, right here. Um... Where, yeah, it just doesn't... Seventh content, I'm like, wow, I gotta go out and buy this. Tainted Grail is like, uh, eh, I still need a bit more time, and even then, I don't know if I'd play it with, like, my mom. It's a, you know, a bit too dark, it's a bit too complicated i guess even though it's not really complicated and i don't I, it is similar to seventh continent in some ways and i think i'd rather go for that i'm not shitting on this because it is cool just it's cool as a solo thing but all right i'll leave it off here um like i said i might have one other game i want to take a look at but otherwise uh pretty close to being done with all these videos on uh, single-player board games, we've, we've looked at quite a few. Some very cool games. Uh, but alrighty then. My name is Mang. This has been Tainted Grail, The Fall of Avalon on Tabletop Simulator. See you fine folks around.